Good morning. Today we're going to learn about waves, particularly sound waves are interesting to us because we interact with our environment. We learn a lot about our environment through sound. But light is also a wave. So we're thinking about all these different ways energy can be transferred uh, through waves. So just going to kind of talk through a couple of things. So a wave is a vibration. I have some cool uh, animations here. So a wave is a vibration, and that's a cyclic motion. Sound is a vibration that transfers energy through the air without actually transferring mass. I have a pretty cool video that shows some interesting examples of things sound can do. One of my students, Lily, showed me this video of laminar flow. So it was of water that looked like it wasn't moving, but it was actually just a trick. So there's a couple camera tricks in here, but most of this is all real things that sound can do. The film you're about to see has no characters. If you spare a little of your imagination, it is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies on matter. isn't a camera trick. This is real. You can see the vibration on nature of a wave really clearly. So this is what's a camera trick. The the way the water looks. Now, the vibration from the kick drum is actually changing the way the water moves, but how we see it is a bit of an illusion. So if you like this video, I will post the link and you can watch it. Uh, there's some really, really interesting things that sound can do, and by the time we talk more about characteristics of sound and what happens when waves interfere with each other, you should be able to understand a little bit more how some of those things were created. So there's two types of waves. There's what are called transverse waves and longitudinal waves. And a transverse wave is when the particle moves up and down and the energy it moves kind of side to side so if we were in school i would have you like shake slinkies um, and a longitudinal wave is when that energy moves in the same direction as the particles move so the particles move side to side and the energy moves side to side so putting that in an animation we can see it better when we look at it like this so we've got our transverse wave where the particles are moving up and down, but the energy is propagating to the right. And we've got our longitudinal wave where those particles are kind of shifting back and forth. The air, it, so sound is an example of a longitudinal wave. So the air compresses and the, the molecules are close together. And then in some parts, the molecules are far apart. So compression and it's called rarefaction or just like dense and less dense, dense, less dense, dense, less dense. And that's the cyclic nature of sound. Water waves are a little different and I bet when you answer the question like what is a wave, you probably mentioned something about water waves. And they have kind of a combination of transverse and longitudinal and the particles in a water wave move kind of in little circles here. So again, we've got these um, longitudinal waves where a wave has particles moving parallel to the direction of energy travel. 
this is when we think about sound and how you're hearing me right now is the electrical energy in whatever device you're using to listen to me is causing the speaker to vibrate and then that vibration of the speaker is actually pushing on the air molecules and those air molecules kind of like dominoes just uh, hit one to the other to the other to the other to the other and then eventually that domino chain reaction hits your eardrum in your ear and that's how you hear uh, the sound is by energy being transferred from molecule to molecule to molecule to molecule through the air into your ears. So sound is an example of a longitudinal wave we're going to talk about a lot. P waves in earth science are also longitudinal waves. These are also known as pressure waves. And this is to be contrasted with transverse waves. So transverse waves would be like a wave on a, on a jump rope or S waves, also known as the earthquakes surface traveling waves in earth science. And these are waves where particles move up and down, but the energy moves like to the right. So I'll show you another example of this. So we can have just a single pulse. A pulse is not an oscillation. It's not a wave. It's just uh, one bit of energy moving. Um, but a wave is a continuous oscillation that sends energy from one point in space to another point in space. So this is a wave, whereas what we saw before was a pulse. So we've got this continuous vibration. This is a transverse wave. And a lot of the time we'll visualize sound waves as transverse waves and graph them so they look a little bit like transverse waves. So I can adjust a couple things about this wave, which are pretty cool. So I can adjust the amplitude. So if I restart this, I can make my amplitude really big. So notice what happens when my amplitude is really big. The distance that each maximum and each minimum are from this middle line where the, the oscillation started is greater. So as I decrease my amplitude, I can see that that kind of height from the equilibrium line is smaller. So with sound, this is volume. So if you have an amp hooked up to your guitar, that amp amps up the volume of your sound. We can also change the frequency. So I had the frequency at 1.5 hertz. I'm going to double that and do about three hertz if it'll let me. And we can see, oh my goodness, it is so, so very fast. So what's happening is the cycles are coming much more rapidly. There's a lot more cycles per second in this than um, there was before. For today, what's really, really important is the frequency, the idea that the number of oscillations or the number of cycles per second is the frequency, and then also the wave length. So if I, if I pop a ruler on here and I measure the distance from one point of a wave to another point of a wave that is the same, so peak to peak, I get the wavelength. So the wavelength is about one centimeter and I can see that reflected as so one centimeter throughout this whole situation. So the wavelength is the distance from one point in a wave to another point in a wave that's doing the same thing. And the frequency is the number of cycles in a given period of time. So just to recap this kind of in writing, amplitude is kind of how high that wave is, how big that wave is. It's a sense of the amount of energy in a wave and for sound it represents the volume. The wavelength is the distance between two points that are doing the same thing or in phase with each other. And it's given this funky symbol lambda. This is a Greek letter. And frequency is the number of cycles per second. So if we look at this graph that has time on the x-axis, the number of cycles in one second is, so we can go, we go down and we go up, that's one cycle. We go down, we go up, that's two cycles. So two cycles in one second gives us a frequency of two hertz. And you may have seen hertz before, and I think hertz is kind of a fun unit. It's actually named after a guy named 
hertz. Hertz in German means heart, and you can think about the frequency of your heartbeat as a way of trying to remember the unit for frequency uh, hertz. So for sound, if I increase the hertz or the frequency, I increase the pitch. So I, I have like a higher pitch note, like an E as opposed to an ooh sound. And for light, if I increase the frequency or change the frequency, I'm actually changing the color or the type of light. And more on that uh, at the Zoom meeting on Wednesday. So the type of light could be microwave, it could be visible light, it could be infrared, it could be that 5G type of electromagnetic wave. So frequency is the cycles per unit time. One last thing that I mentioned that I think is really helpful to uh, think about is the medium. So the material that a wave travels through is called the medium and mechanical waves require a medium. So sound requires a medium. And if you've ever listened to your voice like recorded or listened to your voice in a video, you may notice that you sound different <laughs> than you really sound in real life. And that's because the sound that you hear yourself as is traveling through the air and then like to your ears or it's traveling like through your nose and through like your face bones and muscles and to your ears that way. So the way that you hear yourself is not the way that a microphone hears yourself because the microphone is only hearing the transmission of that energy through air. Whereas you hear the transmission of that energy through air and through your body. So it actually sounds different. <laughs> so the medium is the material that the wave is actually traveling through. And what's really interesting and really fun to think about, I think, is that light does not require a medium. So light is a type of wave called an electromagnetic wave. And electromagnetic waves do not require a medium. No medium needed for light to travel. And we can very clearly see that because uh, we can see the stars in the night sky. And actually coming up in the next week or so, and I will definitely let you know, is a comet that we should be able to see with our, with our unaided eye in the night sky. So there's actually no medium required for light to travel. It can travel through the emptiness of space, but sound is a mechanical wave. It requires a medium. So every, um, every Star Wars movie or action movie where there's an explosion in space and it's there's a noise associated with it, it's not just deathly silent, it's, it's lying to you, basically, <laughs> because there's no way for the energy to be transferred through the emptiness of space. There's no medium for it to be transferred through. So no one can hear you scream in space. Um, there's no air in space. It's just empty, empty. So I think that's enough for today. I'm going to cut myself off here. I hope to see you Wednesday at the Zoom to talk a little bit more about the, the funky nature of light and the types of electromagnetic waves and the, our limitations in terms of hearing and seeing and the implications of different electromagnetic waves like 5G and other communication waves.